Hey, what's up, Musers? This is John at Muse for You here to help you build awesome websites without code. And I'm happy to announce that the new version of Adobe Muse has been released, and it's version 2015.1, and it does include responsive design uh, among other features. So I'm going to open up Adobe Muse, and as we can see, it's a little bit different. It has kind of this orange uh, intro, this picture, and I'll go to File New. Yep and I'll click OK and I'll click on home and here we have the the home page uh, you'll notice there's more panels here on the right initially and I'll go ahead and open the documentation for the new release and I'll read each new section and I'll go over each section uh, very quickly so the first one is responsive web design uh, you can now create unique responsive websites for different screen sizes without any coding Adobe Muse provides a blank canvas without restrictive templates or grids for designing responsive websites. In the earlier versions of Adobe Muse, you could only create adaptive sites, that is, websites that adapted to the browser's widths of different devices. The page and the page elements were not fluid or did not scale for each browser width. The page layout was fixed for specific browser widths. And it goes on to say a few more things, but uh, basically I'll, I'll show you really quick what that means. Uh, so we have, let's say we have a rectangle, and I'll bring in my swatches. Let me import a swatch library. So I have some colors here. So let's say we have this rectangle here. And if we notice up here, we have the, the breakpoints uh, bar here. And right now we're at a, a width of 960. So if I right click and I add a breakpoint, let's say I add a breakpoint for a tablet, I'll say 768 for the breakpoint width. Uh, we now have this breakpoint width. And I can right click and add a breakpoint and I can say 480 for let's say mobile devices uh, so what this does is that I have three different screens that I can design my website on and they'll be responsive so when I shrink the browser once it gets to the 768 breakpoint um, it'll start using the elements in this section and once it gets to the 480 breakpoint it'll start using the elements in this section and you can also hide elements for different breakpoints so I have this rectangle here, and I'll actually make it 100% uh, width. You can do responsive width, or you can stretch to browser width. Uh, so I'll stretch it to the browser width. And let's say for the 768 section, um, I right click, I can right click on the element, and I can hide in the breakpoint. So if I go to File, Preview Page, and Browser, and I shrink my uh, browser width, we can see at 768, this is about 768 uh, pixels wide. Um, that element disappears because we hit it in that breakpoint and then when we get to the mobile version which is at 480 uh, the breakpoint is at 480 that element comes back so that's just a quick kind of overview of that uh, now scroll effects are not enabled with responsive design because it would be a bit too much for devices to have scroll effects and response and uh, excuse me and scroll effects uh, so that's just kind of a quick overview I am going to create uh, an entire video on how to create a website, a, a responsive website in Adobe Muse. Um, but there is plenty of material out there on how to start with uh, the responsive um, website in Adobe Muse. And basically, it's just that simple adding breakpoints and designing your site to those breakpoints so that, so that your website looks good uh, when, when you change the browser width and it hits those breakpoints. Um, and there's also uh, some text breakpoints. You can alter the text and how the text changes on the different breakpoints. Uh, but I'll go over this in, in a lot of detail in a later video tutorial where, where I show you how to create an entire website, um, an entire responsive website in Adobe Muse. Okay, so that's the first point. And I'll go to the next feature, which is, um, oh, this is a starter files here. So Adobe Muse has some starter files that you can start with uh, to start playing with responsive design. And I think that's in that first pop-up screen when you first enter the new Adobe Muse. Uh, Creative Cloud Libraries in Adobe Muse. Uh, this is fairly simple. Um, to to access, access the create, Creative Cloud Library, uh, you just go to Window, and then you go to um, CC Libraries right here. And let's say you have some libraries. So I, here I have some colors, um, or I have a, a color swatch library. And if I wanted to, let's say, use the swatch on another computer, I could sync it with my Creative Cloud uh, simply by clicking this button here. Right now I have library syncing disabled, but I could sync it with my um, 
with Creative Cloud, and if I was using uh, Adobe Muse on another computer, I could access my my assets here, my library assets, and here I have some swatches, so I could access access these swatches uh, through the Creative Cloud. Yeah, so that's uh, that's Creative Cloud, and you can sync your assets with Creative Cloud and use it on another computer where you're using Adobe Muse. Okay, so I'll go to the next one. Uh, the next one is State Transition. Um, here it says you can make your design more interesting and engaging by applying transitions to different elements on your web page. You can also set the delay, duration, and timing options for each state transition and each element. So this is a lot of fun. So let me just close this here. Uh, so let's say, let me just make this uh, more of a square. So I have this square here. And let's say on rollover, I want the color to change. Uh, so we can, we can change this really quick. Um, so if I go to here where it says rectangle and I go to normal and then I click on rollover and let's say on rollover I want it to turn to this dark blue here and so if I go to file preview page and browser and I hover over it we can see we just have a quick transition where it goes from uh, light blue to, to dark blue uh, so to make the transition kind of a smoother transition we can click on the on the rectangle or it kind of looks like a square here and here we have this little button if we go up here where it says rectangle and we click on normal here we see this little transition option if we click on that we can say fade and we can set a delay for the fade in seconds seconds so if I click one uh, it'll change in seconds and we can change the duration of that transition so if I say two it'll be a really slow transition and then for the speed we can say linear ease ease in ease out or ease in out Okay, so now if I go to File, uh, Preview Page and Browser, if I hover over it, it has that really slow transition and then it turns into dark blue. So there you can kind of play with the transitions and I'll make it uh, one second so it's a little bit faster. And we won't have a delay on it just so we can see it right away. And I'll say Ease and... Okay, so I'll go to File, excuse me, uh, Preview Page and Browser. And there we have that nice transition. We could even say ease in out, ease in out. There we go. And I'll go to file, preview page and browser. So it eases in. Yeah, and then it eases out when you um, when you move your mouse off of it. So that's ease in out. Okay, let me try just ease in. I'll go to file, preview page and browser. So it eases in into that different color, and then it eases out. Okay, so yeah, you can play with this and see how that works for you, the ease in and the ease out functions uh, for the different transitions. And you can even add um, images in here and have the images uh, change real quick. So I'll add an image here for the normal state. And then I'll add, I'll go to the rollover state and I'll add a different image. Okay, so now if I go to file, preview page and browser, if I hover over it, we have those image change and there's a nice easing, uh, there's a nice transition between those images. Okay, so that's that was the, um, the transition property that's been added to Adobe Muse. And uh, now I'll go to uh, SVG graphic improvements. Uh, here it says Adobe Muse 2015.1 allows you to import SVG files into an image frame, crop the image and apply fill and stroke if there are no and apply fill and stroke, excuse me. Uh, if there are no frames, you can now import an SVG file directly, create a frame, and then crop the image. You can also add SVG images to, to slideshows. These SVG graphic improvements give you additional flexibility while designing slideshows. Okay, so uh, I'll just add an SVG image really quick. And so if I click, hold, and drag and add the SVG image, there we have it. And we can see that it's now in a frame. So we can just use it like we did with regular images. So if I click in here with the crop tool and I resize it, um, it, it has an image frame and it has the image inside the image frame. So it's just basically the SVGs are now more like images, which is really great. Um, and you can also add SVGs to, um, to slideshow. So if I go to object, insert widget, and I go to slideshow, I'll create a basic slideshow. And here I have a slideshow. I'll just move it with the caption and we'll center it. And then I'll just add a few SVG images. I have a few here. I'll click open. 
and we'll just let it load there and then I'll go to file uh, preview page and browser and if I go through it we now have those SVG images in the slideshow so that's a lot of fun it's just more um, compatibility with SVG which is really great okay and the last one here is enhancements in Adobe Muse 2015.1 in the swatches panel you can now import and export swatch libraries through the context menu Adobe Muse 2015.1 supports rotation detection in EXIF content. Images that have rotation information embedded in them will now be rotated to, land to landscape when placed. You can now create empty image frames by deleting the image content of an existing image frame. Double click an image you have placed and press delete. The empty image frames will, the empty image frames will have placeholders. Okay, so that's really great. So let's try that actually. So let me delete this um, slideshow and I'll add the image frame or the image. I'll double click, delete there. And now, yeah, we have a placeholder for that image or yeah, it just acts as a placeholder. So I think that's what that means, but um, I will definitely look more into that. But I believe that's what that says there. And I didn't read the Creative Cloud Libraries. I'll just read this uh, first par paragraph. Uh, it says, Creative Cloud Libraries powered by Adobe Creative Sync Technology uh, enable you to access your favorite assets from home, office, or even when you're on the go. Create images, colors, and more, and more using Photoshop, Illustrator, or, more, or mobile apps like Adobe Capture CC. Access these assets across other desktop and mobile apps for a seamless creative workflow. And then there's more information here. Uh, as well. Uh, so that's it for the updates for the new Adobe Muse. It's Adobe Muse CC 2015.1. Uh, it was just released, I believe today or maybe last night, uh, but I, I just updated it. And yeah, so um, you can get the new update through the Creative Cloud or, you know, however you get the update. I believe it's through the Creative Cloud. Um, that's how I downloaded it. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of great features. There's the responsive design, there, there's the transitions, and there's more uh, SVG uh, compatibilities. Uh, so that's it for this video tutorial. Um, I'm really excited for this new release. I will be making a, an entire video on creating a website with responsive web design in Adobe Muse. Yeah, responsive web design in Adobe Muse. So that's it. Thanks for watching. And again, I do this to help you build awesome websites without code. Uh, you can check out museforyoushop.com. Also in the show, show more section below are links to other resources and links to museforyoushop.com. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you.